Hi YouTube, this is Evie. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. This one is actually going to be a pretty exciting topic. Uh, I posted on my last video about puppy play that I was going to be talking about bunny play and all you guys were like really excited about it. That makes me so happy. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be doing a video talking about bunny play, uh, what bunny play is, how it's different from other kinds of pets, what bunnies can do, how to actually do bunny play, um, treats that you can give them like all that good stuff so yeah hopefully you guys find it interesting I am personally not a bunny player I am not a bunny I am 100% a doggo like forever and always uh, that is what I am but I do know people who are bunny players my previous master dom person owned a rabbit and he bred and showed rabbits so I learned a ton about rabbits from him I have personally always loved rabbit rabbits I have always wanted a pet bunny like for the longest time i remember being in like elementary school and like reading every single book i could find about rabbits but i never got one but now i'm an adult so i'm probably going to get a rabbit so i've been reading more about rabbits and i have a bunch of information and knowledge for you guys to share so yeah i know there's not a whole lot online about bunny players so hopefully i do it some justice and as always if you guys have questions or comments after watching this video please feel free to leave them down below okay so first things first what is bunny play and the definition is pretty obvious it is basically just a form of pet play where the submissive is taking on the role of acting like a rabbit uh, this can be any kind of rabbit this could be a trained house rabbit this could be a show rabbit this could be even a wild rabbit or jack rabbit or a hare there's really a lot of different ways you can you can take bunny play it is very much like puppy play or kitten play because it is usually about a domesticated pet animal as opposed to say something like acting like a pig or a goat which is more focused on humiliation or pony play which is more focused on the exhibition or the training aspects of it i think like kitten play or puppy play it is very much more focused on the nurturing aspects and the caring aspect of actually owning a domesticated animal. I think one of the misconceptions is something that I think makes it hard for people to actually do bunny plays. Not a lot of people have experiences with rabbits in the same way that people have experiences with dogs or cats. Like, it's a common enough pet, but it's not common to where, you know, you may have known somebody as a kid once who, like, owned a pet rabbit and, like, you didn't really interact with them at all. I think people just assume that rabbits sort of have a very invariable personality like they're all really shy and really timid and if that's you like take it that direction you can totally do that but not all bunnies are that way not all bunny players are that way you don't have to be shy and timid in order to be a rabbit rabbits come in all different shapes and sizes very literally like you can have everything from a tiny little dwarf to like a like a like a medium size like japanese harlequin to like a really big welsh giant like you can be a really small, really cute little tiny bunny, or really like giant dog sized bunny. Like, literally, size wise, there's a lot of different options with bunnies, and with all of those varieties of breeds come a really wide variety of personality. You can get even individual rabbits within the same breed that have very different personalities. I think something that's also worth noting is there is a lot of gender difference between male and female rabbits in terms of personality. It's, it's very much like horses, like, um, uh, both female horses and female rabbits tend to be a bit more moody than their male counterparts, whereas the males tend to be a bit more uh, cuddly and loving. And it also depends on the gender of the owner as well. So, for example, if you are a female, pretty good chance you're going to get along more well with a rabbit of an opposite gender than you are of the same gender. But this is just for play. This is not about real bunnies. So it doesn't really matter what your gender is or your owner's gender is. You could also totally play as a rabbit or any kind of pet that is opposite than uh, your human gender like that is totally a thing that you can do there is a huge variety of personalities again not just being side not just being timid timid you can be like really rambunctious and bratty as a rabbit you could be really cuddly and sweet and loving you can be like very adventurous and like want to like go off and explore everything and have no fear like a little jack russell terrier in a rabbit form like there are so many things you can do personality wise with a rabbit and i think it makes it really interesting to actually be a rabbit because people have those assumptions about rabbits and you can totally turn that on its head I think unlike um, kitten play or puppy play, and again, I think a lot of this is a lot of the fact that a lot of people have experiences with like rabbits in real life other than maybe at a petting zoo or something like that. 
is people aren't really sure how to do bunny play or how to act like a rabbit like most of our like shared experiences with rabbits are like the easter bunny or like going to a petting zoo or something like that it's a very like small small way of bunny like people don't know what sounds do bunnies make how do bunnies interact with humans like all of that stuff uh bunnies again it does depend on their personality but generally the ways that that bunnies operate is either they live outside in a hutch or they live inside and they're actually like house rabbits and are allowed to go around. Now, there's a lot of this actually that you can turn into a form of play and do as part of your BDSM scenes as a rabbit, as a pet player. So, for example, one of the things that rabbits are completely notorious for, and this is very much actually like a puppy, is they love to chew on cords and they love to chew on wooden furniture. It is their favorite thing to do in the whole world probably. So, like a pet uh, like a like a new pet, like a puppy, any kind of very curious cat even that scratches on all the furniture or the walls. Uh, bitter apple spray on the furniture where they try and chew it or mark it. That should help solve that problem and it can be a fun little part of the scene as well. Uh, another thing that rabbits do is if they think they have ownership over something, they will rub their chin on it because that is where uh, their head glands are. It's very similar to what cats do or with uh, what dogs do with spraying or marking. Male rabbits will spray and mark as well, but it depends on the breed and the individual. Not all rabbits will do that, and most breeders will specifically try to breed male rabbits that don't do that. So yeah, if if it's a male bunny or even anybody, a female bunny as well, they will rub their chin on something if they think they own it. And that can be a fun little way to start a bratty scene. For So for example, if you are trying to tell the rabbit that such and such a thing is not theirs and they continually rub their chin on it, well, gonna have to discipline that bunny now, huh? So that's something you can do as well. With rabbits, they can be trained in a wide variety of ways, actually. You'd be surprised. Bunnies, um, certain breeds more so than others, again. But they do tend to be very intelligent and very capable of learning. They're not as easily trained as a, as a dog would be. They're more like training a cat than like training a dog. Like it, it is possible, but I think they're a bit more trainable than most cats. You can train them, for example, to be litter box trained, just like a cat. So you can incorporate that into your scenes. They can actually be trained to walk on a leash. Something that's really common with show rabbits is they will actually be trained to sit and stay in, the, in a specific position, depending on what body type they have. Because when you're actually showing a rabbit, uh, the judge is actually going to walk around and like examine the rabbit and different rabbits body types are supposed to um, be shown in a very specific way to emphasize the body type that they have. And so you can also incorporate that into your play if you're into things like position training and trick training. Rabbits can learn how to do tricks. Um, they are particularly good at tricks that involve using their nose. So for example, you could hide treats for them in different locations around the house and make them go and find said treats. You can teach them to stand up because who hasn't seen the really adorable cute Instagram pictures of a little rabbit sitting up on its hind legs like this and looking around. Very, very cute. Very, very fun way to make them to make them beg stuff like that something else that rabbits do is they are prone to thumping usually this is done as a scared thing but actually if you're a bratty rabbit you can do it for attention so for example if your owner is sitting there watching video games or a youtube video or something and you want their attention just go like that um usually on a hard surface i'm doing it um, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to hear this actually when I upload this video, but I'm doing it on a hardwood service. You can do it on tile. It's less obvious on carpet, but it's a very, like, quick, like, like, they're just trying to get your attention. And they do it in the wild and, like, amongst themselves if they get scared of something. So depending on what personality you have, you can take that different directions. Rabbits very much need their own space. Uh, rabbits are sociable to a degree, but... For the most part, they're not like golden retrievers, they're not like Labradors. They don't need to be up in your business 24-7. Rabbits do like being cuddled and held, but what they really need is their own space to go back to. Usually, even if a rabbit is house trained, they will have their own covered cage that they can go back to, they can rest and sleep in. Uh, so that is a really good thing to keep in mind. If you're doing bunny play, you can still do things like caging. Real rabbits actually will normally be in a completely wire cage. They have a very, very well padded feet so it's actually not harmful for the rabbit to be in an all-wire cage but if you are a human and you are not wearing copious layers of socks to do this you should probably stick with a solid bottom cage instead. 
Now, I did mention uh, tricks and treats and all of that previously, but what does a rabbit actually eat? Now, if you are a real rabbit, 95% of your diet should be a Timothy hay. They are meant to eat mostly dry grasses because that is what they eat in real life and it's what their digestive system needs to function. Now, we are humans. That kind of food does not taste good to us, but there's a lot of really good, any kind of leafy green really makes a really good, like, food, like an actual meal thing for a bunny player. So, you know, lettuce, spinach, cucumber, any, like, celery, anything that's kind of crunchy and green, that would be best. Uh, now, if you're actually dealing with treats, uh, rabbits, again, have a very sensitive digestive system, so you should give them sweet treats very sparingly. So ideally, if you are a rabbit and you're getting treats, I recommend something like berries, grapes, something that's sort of small and sweet. Something else is you can simulate pellets with cereal. Uh, rabbit pellets, unlike dog food, are usually sort of like small and cylindrical. Uh, but you can do stuff like cocoa puffs, again, if you're wanting to simulate actually eating pellets rather than uh, like, like actual hay itself. Not all rabbits like carrots, though, so keep that in mind. If you want to go with a very like stereotypical rabbit, for sure eat carrots, but I know rabbits that hate carrots. That is basically what you can do for uh, tricks and treats, and you can, you know, not do any tricks or treats if you want to, but for me personally, and I'm a puppy, that is a huge part of my play, and I think it's a really, really fun aspect of play. You don't have to do it all the time, either, it can just be a one-time thing if you're not into it. Rabbits as well, because they are very intelligent, and they are very capable of learning different treats and tricks, they need toys, like rabbits don't just sit around all day, like, if you don't give them any toys, they will do the thing where they chin everything and they chew on everything and just and they'll try to burrow in your carpet. Like, don't leave them alone without toys. From what I know, um, most people who have pet rabbits, it's kind of like if, you, if you're familiar with ferrets at all, it's very similar. Um, things like uh, paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls, chewing on paper, uh, let's see what else, any kind of cat toy will work as well. So for example, you know, those little plastic balls that have like, the jinkly bell in it, like one of those. I think there are actually people who make toys specifically for rabbits as well, which you can look into, but there are plenty of DIY and very cheap sort of things that you can get, like the paper towel rolls that you can use for bunny play. Now, bunnies are usually a bit more picky than dogs when it comes to petting. Some really don't want to be touched at all and will thump and bite you. That's something to keep in mind as well. Even a domesticated rabbit, if it is provoked or discared, it is prone um, to biting. It's something that most responsible breeders will try to keep out of a line, but it is something that happens when they're scared and to some degree it's not something that can be avoided, but if they're scared, they can bite, um, they can, like, try to jump or out of your hands or thump on you or something like that, but they have different tolerances for cuddling and pets. Generally, the best spot to pet a rabbit is going to be on their back, on the top of the head, between the ear between the ears or something like that. Anything that is sort of on the sides of the rabbit or on the stomach is generally going to be something that they're going to be like, mm, no, no, and they're going to get out of the way because they are a prey animal. They don't want anybody touching their, like, sensitive parts of their body in places that they could be hurt. Uh, over time, though, rabbits can become more comfortable with their humans, and they can be okay with being petted in more locations. But if a rabbit if you are not familiar with is one that you want to pet, or if you're just getting started in bunny play, I start with the back and top of the head. That is generally the safest place to do so. Uh, when you see a sleeping rabbit or a very relaxed rabbit, like they just kind of sprawl out everywhere and flop everywhere and they kind of put their limbs all over the place or they, they like look like a little loaf. <laughs> They're just like a little rabbit loaf and it's so cute. But you can definitely tell when a rabbit is comfortable in their environment when they splay out like that. If they are not comfortable, they will generally like scrunch up and like look really alert and like dart around and if they're actually looking for danger that is when they stand on their hind legs and look around also keep that in mind if you want to get more into actually using the uh, body language of a rabbit uh different rabbits obviously have different kinds of ears english lops have really really long flopped over ears you know little dwarf breeds usually have little tiny little small pricked up ears um some rabbits like harley quinns dutch odos things like that will have the more traditional like straight up rabbit shape um, and they will all signal with their ears differently depending on uh, what they're actually experiencing and if they're like, you know, alert or if they're relaxed or stuff like that. 
But yeah, that's kind of everything I wanted to cover about Bunny Play. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, video suggestions, please feel free to leave that down in the comment section below. If you guys want to find links to related videos, my resources, my social media, that is all down in the description box. If you like this channel, you like this video, and you want to support me and see more, I would highly recommend, one, subscribing to this channel, and then also going to my Patreon. I have a ton of really great perks for you guys if you would consider supporting this channel. But until I see you next time, have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.